Hi, this will be your recorded discussion on intravenous fluid computation. This is somehow a recapitulation of the previous recording on medication computation. This one is focused on intravenous fluid computation. So remember that your intravenous fluid administration is considered to be a dependent nursing function, which means we rely on the physician for the venoclysis or the intravenous fluid that would be administered to the patient. Okay, we cannot insert your intravenous fluid without the order of the doctor. Okay, just as a recap, the common fluid that you can encounter in the clinical setting is your plain NSS. So when I say plain NSS, that is also the same as your 0.9 sodium chloride. Okay, this is a common appearance of your plain NSS, the one found in the center of the picture. So that is a one liter intravenous fluid. Please do not be uh, over familiar with the color because the color of the intravenous fluids tend to vary depending on the brand that is being used. Then, these are the common IV fluids also in the clinical setting. The first one in pink is your D5LR, that's dextrose 5 in lactated ringers. The blue one is your plain LR. And then the blue, uh, the light blue is your D5.3 NACL. And then your green is your 0.9 NACL or your plain NSS. Isotonic. Isotonic fluids are your plain LR and your plain NSS. When I say isotonic fluids, they have the same concentration as our plasma in terms of osmolality. So we usually use your plain NSS and your plain LR among your patients who has problems such as diarrhea, among your patients who have problems related to bleeding. Okay, so these are the fluids that we use. Your D5LR is commonly used among patients who are on NPO. So when I say NPO, NPO is nothing per RM, meaning your patient is not taking any food, maybe for the purpose of surgery or maybe for the purpose of resting the gastrointestinal tract of your patient. So for that matter, we give your D5LR. It's a dextrose-containing, okay? Dextrose-containing IV fluid. In other words, okay, it can provide for the glucose needs of the body. Your D5.3 and ACL is the common IV fluids used for your pediatric patients. Okay, this is our mainstay for pediatric patients. Just as a recap, this one is referred to as A. Is this a macroset, a microset, or a volumetric chamber? Yes, this one is a macroset. This one, commonly referred to in the clinical setting, again, as your soluset. Okay, this is actually your volumetric chamber. Let's go over the formula used for intravenous fluid calculations. So let's try. This one is for ml per minute. So the physician ordered plain NSS 1 liter times 125 ml per hour. If that's the case, so the ml per minute, if you will be asked how many ml per minute, so our ml per hour is 125 ml per hour. That would be divided by 60 minutes, okay, ml per hour divided by 60 minutes. So if I'm going to use my calculator to divide 125 divided by 60, that would give us a value of 2.08. So that will be around 2.08 ml or simply 2.1 ml per minute. Now, the physician ordered plain NSS 1 liter times 8 hours. How many ml per hour? So in this case, you need to pay particular attention on the volume in ml. So plain NSS, 1 liter in ml, that would be 1,000 ml. And the number of hours would be 8 hours, as indicated on the given. So little math, 1,000 divided by 8 would give us a value of... Okay, 1,000 divided by 8 will give us a value of 125. So in this case, there will be 125 ml per hour. Then... For example, if the physician ordered plain NSS 1 liter times 125 ml per hour, how many hours will the infusion last? So that will be volume in ml. Again, that's 1,000 ml per hour, or 1,000 ml, I mean, and then 125 ml per hour. 1,000 divided by 125 would give us a duration of 8 hours. So meaning the intravenous fluid of your patient will be good for 8 hours. Okay. The first three computations here could be um, done with your simple arithmetic. So try to familiarize the formula, but then, um, that, yeah, try to familiarize the formula and apply it on these questions. Now, the particular computation that we commonly use in our setting in the hospital is to compute how many drops per minute. Again, I've mentioned to you that abroad, you may be using the 
infusion pumps which can regulate the amount of fluids that is being administered to your patient per hour. But here in our local setting, you will be using this computation okay, for you to determine how many drops per minute okay, that you'll be using for your patient. Okay, so the formula is volume in ml times draft factor divided by number of hours times 60. Or you may also have ml per hour times draft factor divided by 60. Okay, I usually use this first formula. You may opt to use the second formula whenever necessary. Now, let's apply volume in ml. So the given says 1 liter. So since it's 1 liter, 1000 ml times the draft factor, which is indicated in this given, I mentioned to you that the drop factor of 15 and 20 will be applicable for those who are on macro set. And then the number of hours will be 8 hours. Okay, number of hours will be 8 hours. So, and then let's do the math. That would give you 1,000 times 20. Okay, 1,000 times 20, that's a 20,000 divided by 8 times 60 is 480. So that would give us a value of 41.67. In that case, again, we could not regulate for 0.67 drops. So your answer would be 41 to 42 drops per minute. Okay, that would be the realistic answer for that. Okay, this is applicable for the draft factor of 20. Now, there is a shortcut to this. Okay, try to discover the shortcut as we go along. Then, if the physician ordered plainness as 1 liter times 125 ml per hour, how many drops per minute? In this case, since what is given is ml per hour, it would be wise for you, prudent for you to use the second formula. Okay, you can still opt for the first. Then, let's try using the second formula. ml per hour is 125 times the draft factor, which is 20. And then divided by 60. Okay, grab your calculators. Then 125 times 20 divided by 60 that would give you a value of 41 to 42 drops per minute. Okay, 41 to 42 drops per minute still. If you will be using the first formula to solve for this problem here, you first need to determine the number of hours for the IV to infuse. Because what is given to us is 125 ml per hour. You first need to divide 1000 ml to 125 ml per hour, which would give you 8 hours. So basically, okay, the first and second question point to the same, ideally. Okay, let's try the exercises. Okay, the doctor ordered D5.3 and ACL 500 ml times 30 cc per hour. How many ml is consumed every minute? So if I would look at the uh, ml consumed every minute, that would be, mm, that would be the rate, okay, which is ml per hour divided by 60. So if I would divide that with 60, okay, 30 divided by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, so 30 divided by 60, that would be 0 0.5 ml per hour. So notice that when I'm writing my answers, I'm applying the concept on the trailing zeros and the leading zeros. So no, no to trailing zeros, yes to leading zeros. In this case, I wrote it as 0 0.5 ml per hour. How many hours will the IV be consumed? Okay, if you would look at it, the total amount of the IV is 500 ml. And then if the rate will be at 30 cc per hour, okay, we would divide it to 30 for us to determine the number of hours it will be consumed. So if I will be using, again, the calculator, 500 divided by 30, that would give you 16.67. So this is 16.67 hours. Okay, is 16.67 hours the same? as you are 16 hours and 67 minutes okay so that would be a no-no that's not how you convert um, decimal hours to hours and minutes the wise thing for you to do is to multiply 0 0.67 to 60 so 0 0.67 to 60 that would give you 40.2 okay so i can say that this iv should run for 16 hours and 40 minutes okay remember the 0.67 there is part of the hour Okay, it's the fraction of an hour. So again, that's 0 0.67 times 60. 60 minutes in an hour. That would give you 40.2. Basically, 16 hours and 40 minutes. Now, how many drops per minute since I'm using a micro set here? So I'll grab the formula here. Okay, but you need to memorize the formula when you're doing this on your own. Okay, um, 
volumen ml mm -hmm. that's not 1000 anymore remember the iv is 500 ml what's the drop factor it's not mentioned okay but it's mentioned that we're using microset if you can recall the discussion if it's microset we use 60 as the drop factor then the number of hours will be we've computed for that one the number of hours is 16.67 Okay, and then times 60. So, if we'll be using your calculators, okay, we'll have your 500 times uh, 60 divided by, okay, divided by 1,000. That will give us a value of 30 drops per minute, okay? Or, strictly speaking, this should be six, uh, 30 micro drops per minute, okay? Notice, notice this one. The rate is 30 ml per hour, and then the, uh, the drops per minute is 30 micro drops per minute. That would already give you a hint on what is the shortcut on when we are computing for this one. Okay, now, next example. Planeness says 1 liter times 100 ml per hour. How many hours will the IV be consumed? So the total IV is uh, 1000 ml. That would be divided by... Okay, let's divide it by 100 ml per hour. Okay, 1,000 divided by 100 ml per hour would give us a value of 10 hours, meaning this one will be good for 10 hours. How many drops per minute? It says here macroset. Okay, the drop factor is 20. Okay, now, if you would look at it, uh, so let's grab the formula. Okay, without looking at the formula, let's try if we can recall the formula. So the formula for uh, the rate of your IV is the amount. Okay, that would be the amount in ml. Okay, let's see. The total amount in ml is 1,000 ml times the drop factor, which is 20. Then the number of hours. The number of hours is 10 times uh, 60. And then that will give us the value of drops per minute. Okay, allow me. So 1,000 times 20 is 20,000 divided by 600. And then that would give us a value of 33.33. And again, we cannot regulate 0.33. So let's give it 33 to 34 drops per minute. Okay, 33 to 34 drops per minute. Now, on the shortcut. Okay, I'll be sharing to you a shortcut. But the purpose of this is for you to counter check your computations. You are not supposed to apply shortcuts when you are doing your actual computation. Okay, again, the purpose of the shortcut is for counter checking measures. Okay, now, if the drop factor is 20, simply divide the IV rate to 3. So the IV rate on this case is 100 ml per hour. Okay, try 100 ml divided by 3 or 100 ml per hour, I mean, divided by 3, would give you a value of 33.33. .33. Then, if the, if the drop factor is set at 15, okay, you simply divide it by 4. Okay, you simply divide it by 4. Okay, allow me to pick an example wherein we have a drop factor of 15. Okay, here. Okay, so for example, since the drop factor of this one is 15, okay, Let's have this formula. So it's still 1,000 ml times 15. That's a drop factor. Okay, 100 ml per hour. So we'll consume it in 10 hours times 60. Okay, let's do some math. That would be 1,000 times 15 divided by 10 times 60 is 600. That would give you 25 ml. I oh know, 25 drops per minute. Okay, as you can see, it's divided by 4. So if the drop factor is 15, you divide the ml per hour to 4. And that would give you 25 drops per minute. Okay? And then, if we're dealing with microset, if we are dealing with microset, okay, it's simply the rate per hour is also equal to the number of micro drops per minute. Again, the rate per hour is equal to micro drops per minute. Okay? Again, just to recap, the shortcut would be if the drop factor is 15, divide ml per hour to 4. If the drop factor is 20, divide ml per hour to 3. If the drop factor is 60, simply copy the ml per hour and that will be your rate of IV fluid administration. Okay, I hope that this enlightens you on how to use the formula. Okay, 
Now, activities 7 up to 9 is up to you. Okay, try to work on that and try to compare with your classmates if ever uh, your answers are correct or not. And then approach your respective clinical instructors if you have questions as to how to go about with these problems. Okay? Once again, thank you very much for your kind attention.